Greetings, and welcome to the Carbonite demonstration of Carbonite Migrate Full Server Migration. In this short video, we're going to show you how easy it is to migrate an entire server, all of its data, applications, and settings from anywhere to anywhere utilizing Carbonite Migrate. So let's go ahead and get started. What I've done beforehand is I have two Windows 2012 servers right here, Dash 1 and Dash 2. I've installed the Carbonite Migrate product on it, and I've license and activated the source. At this point we're ready to create our job. Simply right click and go ahead and go to the migrate job option. You're presented with a screen that's going to give you all the different workloads that we can do and we're doing the full server migration here. By default it's going to select everything. Now you can also deselect non-system volumes if you want to but I want everything here. If you want specific rules as well you can go ahead and select them down in the replication rules. Go next and now it's going to show me targets that I can go to. Since I'm doing the full server migration, it goes from like to like, so 2012 R2 to 2012 R2. So I have to select that particular server. I can also say find a new server and if I wanted to do some testing without sending the data to the target, I can also select a diagnostics job. After I say next, now I'm getting to the job options page. We're not going to go through all the job options here, but I want to go through just a few of them and we can see some of the features that are built in with Carbonite Migrate. First and foremost, what we have here is the failover identity. By default, if the two servers are on the same subnet, we're going to go ahead and take the production's IP address and apply that to the target. Now, if they were in different subnets, you could say retain target network configuration, and we can even update a Microsoft DNS server. These two servers are on the same subnet, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave that alone. Under failover options, if we wanted to automatically cut over, we would simply uncheck this box and as soon as all the data had been sent and was in a good state it would go ahead and start that process however typically you want to wait for the night or weekend to do this so we're going to leave that checked and this option here is going to make sure that the production server is shut down when we do the migrate that way no one can modify that data keep in mind we simply shut it down we don't touch anything on that original production server so if something does not go right maybe the migration can't complete you can go ahead and just power on the original production environment and you're back to where you were we can also set up certain things as compression we can enable compression minimum medium and maximum depending on your needs as far as what you're going to and as far as the available bandwidth and throughput you can also speaking of bandwidth and throughput we can also set up bandwidth limits. We can use a fixed bandwidth limit or we can use a scheduled bandwidth limit saying hey during work hours limit it to a certain amount. Once you have all your job options set simply say next and it goes through a pre-flight checklist to make sure that the source and target are compatible. If there's anything wrong we're gonna let you know and if everything's okay we can simply click finish and create our job. So our job is created. At this point, it starts mirroring and replicating all the data. Now keep in mind, nothing has taken offline during this process. All the applications, all the data, all the services that are running in the production environment are still running and are still available to the end user. At no point do we take the production offline until you're ready to actually migrate. We go ahead and select our job here. We can see that it's synchronizing. That means it's copying the data. And once it's done, it's going to go into a protected state. We can see how much data it's sent already and the fact that the bytes sent and bytes sent compressed are the same. We did not enable compression. So you can see that bit of information there. So what we're going to do is we're going to hang out, allow this job to complete, get into a protected state, and then we're going to come back and we're going to go ahead and complete the migration. All right, it's been a few minutes and our job is now in the protecting state. That means all the data has been sent over and is now replicating in real time just the byte level changes so we can migrate at any time. Before we do that, let's check out our production environment. Here we are in the production environment here and what I'm gonna do is we're gonna install a quick application and we're gonna make some data changes. So let me go ahead and copy this share folder and again what's happening is while it's copying that the real-time byte level changes are being sent over to the target while this is going on let's go ahead and add a role to the environment let's go ahead and just add a very simple role maybe the print and document services role once that's installed again everything is sent over in real time so as soon as this is done we're going to go ahead and complete the migration and we're going to see that the print and document services have been migrated along with those recent data changes 
All right, our installation is complete and we have that copy done and we now have print services in our server manager. Let's go back to our server and let's go ahead and do the cutover process. To do the cutover, simply select the job, right click, and you'll have an option to failover, cutover, or recover. And we're gonna go ahead and cut over to live data. Typically, that's what you wanna do with a migration. And we click the cutover button. The first thing that happens is production server is shut down. We take all the information on the target server, all the sources, software information, configuration and data we merge that with the targets hardware information and we go ahead and reboot that target machine and it comes up as production this whole process takes just a few minutes so we're gonna let this process complete and we're gonna go ahead and check out that target environment keep in mind this is the only time where downtime is required to migrate your entire server from anywhere to anywhere so it's been a few minutes and what you're going to see on the screen is it basically is going to change to target information is not available because what's happening now is the target machine is restarting and it's going to be coming up as the 2012 R2-1 server. And once all the Carbonite Migrate services start, it's going to show up as EP 2012 R2-1 and the job will say failed over. Let's go and see if we can log in to that target right now. All right, so we just logged in that 2012 R2-1 server. It has all of the same information as the production environment did. If we go into this file and folder location, we'll have that E drive. It'll have all that data, including that copy of data. And when the server manager starts up, we're gonna see that we also have the print services. The last thing I wanna show you on this target here is this folder called staging-SSM. Because the target was running an operating system, it was running 2012 R2-2, what we had to do is we had to temporarily put data into this one. So it does require a little bit of extra space, and we're gonna let you know how much space that is, or if you don't have enough of it when you set up the job, but this is what's there, and once the migration is complete, the actual amount of space that this folder is consuming is going to shrink. We've gone back to the Carbonite Replication console, and we can see that the job has successfully failed over. And even if we go to the server section, what you'll see is you'll now see two 2012 R2s-1. You'll see the old one, which was powered off. Here's the new one, and the old 2012 R2-2 server of course is no longer available. So both of these we can just simply highlight and remove. At that point, our migration is complete. This brings us to the end of the Carbonite demonstration of Carbonite Migrate Full Server Migration. To learn more and to stay informed, please visit us at Carbonite.com. I'd like to thank you for your time and have a great day.